Despite you clicking this video because of what you probably perceive to be a clickbait title, I can assure you that we are going to be talking about the deadliest car in Formula One history. Now, this does not mean this car killed the most drivers or spectators, but rather that through its negligent design and disregard for human life, this led to the needless death of a racing driver. Honda and Formula One have a fraught history. Even today, on the verge of a season that could see them be the WDC and WCC winning engine manufacturer, they are pulling out of F1 to focus on their EV future. Though we are not here to talk about today, we are going to be jumping back to 1964 when Honda first entered F1 only four years after producing their first road-going car. The RA272 was Honda's second F1 design, but first to ever enter a race. And Honda joined only Ferrari and British Racing Motors as teams building their own engine and chassis. And in Honda's second ever season, they reached the top step of the podium with American driver Richie Ginther in the 1965 Mexican Grand Prix. Honda had joined in 1964 under the low power 1.5 liter era, but by 1966, maximum engine size had doubled to 3 liters. Honda struggled in 1966 with their 360 brake horsepower V12 RA273 due to the new regulations requiring completely different design solutions and struggling with an overweight in-house design chassis. 1967 saw Honda return to the top step of the podium in the Italian Grand Prix with the newly designed RA300, which was partially designed by British race car engineers Lola, earning the nickname Hondala by the motorsports press. 1968's RA301 saw Honda and Lola continue their partnership and add a rudimentary wing to last year's design. The RA301 was plagued with reliability issues and disinterest from Honda's top brass as they focused their attention on next year's car. Even still, the RA301 managed to finish on the podium twice and score a pole that season. The game plan for the RA302 was simple. The car needed to be as light as humanly possible. Previous years saw the Honda-designed car moderately over the minimum weight limit, and Honda put designers Yoshi Nakamura and Shoshi Sano to the task of creating a small and elegant monocoque chassis. Nakamura and Sano's design saw the RA302 move the driver and engine forward, which greatly helped weight distribution, but put the driver in harm's way as the new seating position saw the driver's legs now positioned far in front of the front axle line. Under direct orders from So Ishiro Honda himself, the company's engineers also designed an unconventional air-cooled 120-degree 32-valve DOHC V8 engine for the RA302 in an era where all the top competitors' cars were water-cooled. Honda and its engineers had successfully completed the difficult task of shutting the extra weight from their car, and Honda confidently believed they had a title challenger on their hands. Moving the seating and engine position forward, as well as air cooling the engine, had great weight saving benefits, but none more so than the major design flaw in the RA302. The wafer thin sheets of super lightweight magnesium that form the monocoque chassis. Magnesium is difficult to ignite in mass or bulk, while when powdered or shaved into thin strips, it is known to be a highly flammable metal that can burn at temperatures of up to 3100 degrees Celsius or 5610 degrees Fahrenheit. If you are starting to piece together the issue with designing a race car made of a highly flammable metal that is used to manufacture fireworks and marine flares, then you and Honda racing driver John Surtees have something in common. The 1964 world champion took the RA302 out in its first testing session at Silverstone and was less than impressed with the unconventional design. Surtees lasted only two laps before labeling the car uneasy and unstable to drive, along with the engine spewing out oil. Even with further refinements from Honda engineers, Surtees refused to race the car before significant changes had been made, including his biggest concern. The combustible magnesium chassis, which he suggested Honda build out of aluminum instead. 
With Surtees' refusal to drive the RA302 and Honda's insistence on the car making it to the grid, Soishiro Honda himself forcefully entered the car under the Honda France banner with aging Formula 2 driver Joe Slesser in the French Grand Prix as Honda wanted to showcase the air-cooled engine and use it as a halo car to draw attention to the road-going Honda 1300, which was soon to be introduced. Surtees, who was driving the RA301, and even team principal Nakamura did not know of the entry until 7.30 30 a.m. on the first day of practice. The French Grand Prix saw Slesser qualify the RA302 in a horrendous 16th position, while Surtees qualified 7th, driving the older RA301 out of the 18 drivers qualified in the race. The race started normally with everyone getting away cleanly, but in lap 2, as Slesser was making his way through the fast downhill right-hander known as Six Brothers, the rear end of the car kicked out due to the questionable handling previously brought up by Surtees, causing Slesser to run wide into a earth embankment, flipping over trapping him under the car 52 gallons of fuel ignited the chassis and Slesser unfortunately burned alive inside the RA302 Honda in a feat truly lacking in concern for human life actually built a second RA302 featuring the same death trap magnesium body for the Italian Grand Prix which they expected Surtees would now be willing to drive due to an optional wing mounted in the middle of the car to fix the stability issues. In a shock to no one the RA302 was turned down by the former world champion and it sat in pit lane as he drove the RA301 to a pole and then an early retirement from the race. Honda Due to press backlash and their supposed focus on their road car division, dropped out of Formula One at the end of the 1968 season. Thank you for watching the first video on the Via Scene channel. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for further stories and news from around the car world. If you have an interesting car or motorsports story that you think we should check out, leave a comment below or follow us on social media and add us with your best stories.